Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Welcome back to Homeschool Together Podcast. Today we are going to be talking about buy all the books. You get some books. You get yeah, some cute books. cute Oprah voice. We all get the books. Uh, my favorite thing to do is shop for What are your books. favorite? Gosh, I love Ar- to buy books. Ariel, what are your favorite things? Uh, buying books. Buying books. I, I literally shop. I bought a book today. I didn't tell you. I forgot to tell you. It's for the kids? Well, it was just so cool. I had to buy it. It's okay. I found it used. Before we begin, let's make sure you connect with us on Facebook, our Facebook group at Homeschool Together Podcast, and also on Instagram, Homeschool Together Podcast. We want to preface this podcast, you know, buying books is great and all that, but we, you know, we are big library fans. Library is amazing, but right now in the times of COVID, you know, at least around for us, it's very difficult to check books, check books in, mm-hmm. that type of thing. So, you know, even though we are still checking books out at the library, It's a little bit more difficult. It's not as easy to get the books out. It's not as easy to check them back in. A lot of books, they're they're they don't have uh, they're not fine doing fines and all that kind of stuff. And Mm -hmm. collections got waiting periods and things. So a lot of books that we would we would reserve and and put on hold, they're just not they're not coming available. And you know, for a lot of families like ours, where we've got the young one and we've got the older one, um, you know, we're going to be double dipping on a lot of these books. So they're a good investment. So when you're you're when you're doing like spines or any type of, you know, loop looping type of material, looping type of books, um, we like to pick those up. We actually tend to like to buy those. Yeah. We don't we don't tend to buy them new. We tend to buy them used. So we're going to talk a lot about today about how to buy books, where to find them. So let's drop right into it. We're this gonna start like one with of my new favorite books. topics ever. Yeah, I know. This is this is. I'm so excited for this. As, as I stare at, thousands, I gotta I gotta like share with all you guys. Yeah, I know thousands of books I'm staring at. Um, let's talk about first about new books. So how do people go about finding new books? Yeah, so I mean, like the 800 pound gorilla in the room, right? If you need this book in two days, Amazon. You're... A- Amazon. What what is this again? Uh, it's it's called Amazon. A- Am like the forest, right? They sell books. Yeah, out of the trees. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't, I haven't heard of it. Mm, as much as I don't love to support the, I mean, we're prime members, you know, we, it's, it's the way, it's I the way feel, we live. I can but. feel the heat of Bezos's money in the vault by me. It's like literally <laughs> to the South of me. I can feel the warmth. I mean, look, it's sometimes I need something, I need something this week. And so Amazon's the way to go. So just, you know, put that out there. If you need it right away, there really is no faster way no. to get a book well, than Amazon. And, and, you know, to be honest, you know, like I'm, like I'm a big Steinbeck fan. I've been buying all his, you know, minor works. I can't go to the used, book, you know, can't go to too many used bookstores right now. You know, they do have used books on Amazon. There's a lot of used book resellers. So you know, do check if you don't care too much about the quality of the book. You know, they they do sell new, excellent, whatever. But I do buy a lot of used books on there as well. Booza. Huh. You need to listen to my podcast. Do I need to listen to your podcast? You should not be buying used books on Amazon Marketplace. Am I buying overpriced used books? Yes. you. Are. I've been trying to tell you this. Am I staring at overpriced yes, John Steinbeck books? Yes, when you bought books? something, I said, why didn't you ask me to find this? So Folks, the Wayward Bus didn't have to cost me $12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks, do not listen to this man. Don't listen to me. I, I Listen, I'm He's just... He's not really the used book shopper guys, in his household. To be honest, I haven't been outside very much. Listen... I, Do I have to take away your Amazon password? I feel like I'm in the Matrix where it's like all my whole existence is this house. Yeah. Okay. It, okay. Okay. No one follow his advice. Don't all follow right. my advice. So as I was saying, if you got got to get it new, it's got to be here in a couple of days. Use me and Amazon. Yeah, he's he's smiling over there. Do not listen to this man. Okay. So second way that I like to get new books is Book Outlet or KidsBooks.com. We'll put links to everything in the show notes, so don't worry about it. Basically, Book Outlet and Kids Books are the same company. The only difference is the selection on Kids Books does not have the adult stuff that's on Book Outlet. 
because I don't care that it's mixed in, I just have a book outlet account. But you will need to have an account on each if you want to do each. But the kids' books part is the same. It's the same content. So the thing about book outlet is they get surplus books from bookstores and other places, right? So because of that, there is variable supply. They're not going to have everything, but when they do have it, it's like a really great price, a better price than you will find it even used. Mm. So it's really terrific. I bought a number of books off of book outlet. So, and four major curriculums like Torchlight. So what I recommend doing on book outlet or kids books, whichever your flavor is preferred is creating a wish list on there and putting all the books that you need for whatever curriculum or whatever you've got your eye on, put everything on there. They will email you when one of those books comes in. Hmm. The only caveat is you need 35 bucks to get to free shipping. If not, it's $5 to ship. So depending on the price of the book, $5 to ship might be worth it to you. I think by the time you add five bucks, you've probably gone to something that's more expensive than a used copy. So what I would recommend doing is having your wish list of all the books that you want for your curriculum, and then have a second wish list that has a bunch of books that you have found on Book Outlet that you think are nice. So for me, we're starting to collect that who was or who is series, like who was Frederick Douglass, who was Amelia Earhart, right? There's these great... Um, I don't know if they're middle grade chapter books, but they're really terrific kind of biography books. That cool little illustrations. They're cool them. illustrations. They tend to have a ton of those on there. I think those are great to pick up. You can pick them up on Book Outlet for, uh, you know, between, I don't know, a buck 80 and 250, something like that. I feel like those are just a good investment to have. So books like that, some books are tend to be on Book Outlet and they, they, they stay a long time. So I have this list of just a ton of books that I browsed from there that I thought I would use these to make up to free shipping. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I get an email that, Oh my gosh, this hot book that I need is in, I've got a whole bunch of other books here that I think are totally worth it to get me to that free shipping. number. At at a buck or two, it's great. You just toss in a couple and it's a nice little, we have gotten some really cool things. They have these fan decks, uh, really neat. Uh, they're like they're like cards, almost like you know how Brain Quest has got. Yeah, it's a, it's like those. Yeah, yeah. So they've got these long cards. We got one on Africa, and it has a different card for every country. They have one on uh, mummies. They've got one on presidents, the Civil War. They're really cool. Our daughter loves to flip through them. I just bought one all about painters. Yeah, and each one's a different painter. That was really cool. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. So and we actually some found really cool you know, stuff. because we're doing the Blossom and Root. We've actually found a bunch of painters that are in there as well. Right. That are in our. So curriculum. highly recommend going to that site but you need to you need to do it on a wish list kind of thing if you want to get specific books if you're just looking to fill out your home library with some great books go to book outlet because man there's just some great stuff there so, so you talk a, lot, a little bit about wish lists you know how, how do you use wish lists where can people use wish lists and what are the benefits you know like we got kids we grandparents get kids gifts things of that nature how do you use uh, the wish list yeah so as far as both book, Amazon and yeah, so as far as like outlet. book outlet or, or kids books, those wish lists are usually for me. Although I think you could definitely share them. We actually shared the site with with Matt's mother, and she purchased a uh, one big order of books for our daughter for her house and got a whole bunch of things. So that was actually really great. But I think you could totally use that. We also have one on Amazon, uh, just so that when they're shopping for birthdays and Christmas that grandparents know, hey, these are the books we're looking for for the curriculum. A lot of times it's going to be uh, chapter books, different mm-hmm. readers, or different uh, reference books that we think would be great. You know, if I if I see something like, oh, the DK Smithsonian series. Folks, if you have not seen the DK Smithsonian series, like go nice. look it up. They're nice. gorgeous books. And I probably won't buy them for myself unless I, I do see them somewhere for mm-hmm. a deal. So that's the kind of book that I would put on for to have grandma buy. So something like that. I also have games on that list too because you know we love games. So so that's a that's just a great way to use wish lists. So those are the two sources kind of that I would use for new books. And then my favorite, favorite site for both new and used books is bookfinder.com. Now, let me settle in. Okay. Bookfinder is really terrific. It's it's one of those aggregators. So you're going to search for your book and it's going to tell you every site that has the book and what the price is. However, the better thing about Bookfinder is it actually includes the shipping to your zip code, which I think is terrific because I hate to see, oh, this is the best price. Plus $8 to ship. Shipping, yeah. yeah, I hate that. 
So I really <laughs> enjoy seeing that. Um, so a couple of keys to book finder, there's two sides to it. One will give you all the new prices. One will give you the used when I'm buying something like Usborne books, for example, mm -hmm. I just did this, uh, this morning and I didn't tell you about it, but I bought this Usborne book. It was a lift the flaps on world religions. It was so great. And I ended up getting it from a uh, book depository in the UK. It was cheaper to buy it from the UK and have them ship it to the U S wow. to buy it in the U S. Wow. It's interesting. I mean, the book's going to get shipped here either way. Yeah, it's right. either going to get shipped to a retailer here and then I'm going to buy it or it's going to get shipped direct to me from there. So, because that's where they're all made. So where, where did you get the Usborne early reader books? Did you get that from Bookfinder as well? I actually did. I used Bookfinder and I actually ordered those from Amazon UK instead of Amazon US because the Usborne readers, I think, were... I, we bought this amazing. This, the, this is like us. This is like the uh, Turbo Bob Books version. Right. From so Usborne. it's his first reader's library. Yeah. It's fifty books. I think it was eighty dollars on the Usborne site, and then you had to pay shipping for that. Wow. And I think on Amazon it was maybe seventy. I got it on Amazon UK for forty four dollars with shipping, because I use Bookfinder. Oh my gosh, that's like fifty percent off. That's you have yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah, 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 and with with the tax and shipping and everything. So, highly recommend using Bookfinder couple of caveats to it and, and i check it i check it for everything before i order from anywhere uh, i i check this so the the couple of caveats i have are get a reliable isbn number because if you're just going to search on the name alone you could get any edition of that book right because it's looking at books all over the place so get a reliable isbn first sometimes i'll go to amazon or similar and i'll pull the isbn number and then i can use that to search book finder so if you're looking for the isbn number if you find the book on amazon you scroll down in the product description i know i know this because all my books have isbn numbers um there will be an isbn number you can grab that there's also an amazon number so be careful you just you want the isbn number right there's an isbn 10 and an isbn 13 either of them will work for book finder but that helps because it ensures that you're getting the right edition of the book mm -hmm. so use that when searching the other thing i would say is when you find something especially a used book just triple check mm -hmm. that it's what it's the 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 store marked that correctly so one time i used book finder it was great i wanted to buy this book called this is how we do it well, this is how we do well that's what showed up do, 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 do. So, right right so i wanted to buy this book it was about kids all over the world sure. and how they live their lives and where they live and everything and i got a great deal on it that's awesome and it was through the isbn number and i bought it from like abe books from some independent bookseller uh, shipped to my house and a Montel Jordan CD showed up. And so I was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> epic fail, right? Do, do I was you still like, have that? And I, uh, no, I think I donated to Goodwill. Oh. But so anyway, I'm looking at this and I'm going, how did these people screw this up? Who would want, this is how we do it. I never connected that the names were the same. Like I had to contact customer service and they were like, uh, ma'am, that's what you ordered. So anyways, I would just, <laughs> I would just say cheesy nineties R and B. I would just say be is a little bit cautious. Is, is that the nineties? That was oh yeah, totally. That was nineties. Yeah, nineties. Yeah, we were 90s. in like junior high when they were, that was that, oh this was God. played at like junior high dances. Remember? I don't even go to those. Okay, well I went to those. Anyways, yeah. anyways, anyways, we're off topic. Point being, <laughs> point being, if you're gonna buy something used, just double check when you get to that. If you're going through Book Finder especially through like ABE. Um, ABE Books is, I think they actually, they own the Bookfinder site. Anyway, they end up selling books from a whole bunch of independent bookstores. Okay. Goodwills all over the country and different independent bookshops and things will sell through ABE. And I actually get better, I got a better price on that book I bought. I bought actually the Usborne World Religions. It was Book Depository through ABE. But if I had ordered from just regular Book Depository, it was more expensive and it was new. So anyways, just make sure that after you select it, before you hit pay, you take a good look and make sure. But I've been able to get books. I can get picture books as low as three seventy eight used. Wow. And I think that's a pretty – with shipping and everything. It doesn't include tax. So there will still be tax on top of that. The other thing I would mention about Bookfinder is that it includes the shipping, which I think is definitely a feature, not a bug. But if you're in the market for a number of books – you should definitely uncheck. It's just a checkable box right in the middle of the top of the screen when you're on the page where you're actually searching the prices for the books. When you, so you type in the ISBN, hit search. Right there it says, these prices include shipping. You can uncheck that box. So if I'm looking to buy three or four books, 
I might want to see what the cheapest price is without shipping so that I can get them bundled because I'm already going to meet some minimum shipping threshold anyhow. Okay, got it. So the only thing that, that doesn't apply, that would more be like for new books. When you're going for used books and they're coming from ABE or Second Sale or one of these other places, those are coming from independent booksellers all around. And so you're are, not going to... A lot of them are used booksellers that are work, selling books out of the back shop. Like right. I know our right. bookseller here in town does that, yeah. Right. And so the, the deal with that is you're not going to hit a minimum a minimum shipping. But if you're ordering from something like Thrift Books, that those are still used. There is a minimum a minimum order to get free shipping. So be a little cautious. But if, if you've got to be, hey, I have to order 10 books and, you know, the used and new price are fairly similar, you might want to go new and you might want to search them all without shipping so that you can buy them all at the same retailer and then and then get that that minimum shipping quota. So bookfinder.com, by far my favorite site to use to find new and used books. But also they offer a buyback option on books. So what's that? How, how does that work? Right. Oh, so I love this. So one of the things about books, and you know, it's hard with our kids and sometimes books get ruined, but we try to be very careful, especially with our more expensive books. If I know a book like, okay, there's a couple of books for Torchlight that are like, I think they're like 24, 25 bucks, these couple of spines for Torchlight K. And they're gorgeous books. I mean, they're just beautiful, right? So one thing I'm thinking is, well, when we're done with this book, if it, as long as we didn't trash it, um, which hopefully we won't, then I can always sell that to another family that's going to use Torchlight. Mm -hmm. That involves me putting a listing on Facebook Marketplace. Hey, I've got this book. I've got to then weigh it and do the postage for go that. Go down the postal service and go yeah, drop do off all the that. post office. I got to do all that stuff, right? Well, instead... One option I could do is sell it back to one of these used booksellers who's going to sell it to somebody else. And so right there on the book finder page, it says, here is the sell back price. So I know, hey, I spent $24 for this book. It is a $10 buyback price right now. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, this may change over the time, but this gives me kind of an idea of how much this book is worth to a resell. And when I resell it, I get free shipping on that book. Yeah. So if I don't want to worry about the hassle of you know, figuring out how much it weighs and doing all that stuff, I could just box it up, put a tag on it that they give me, drop it off at the store. And it was the easiest thing. I think you did that with some of your textbooks from college. I, I did it. It yeah. was the easiest process. You just mailed it to them. They mailed you a check. Yeah. I highly recommend if anybody has old, you know, like college textbooks or things, I had a kind of a unique major. And so some of my textbooks didn't get updated very often. So I was able to go to like, I think it's sellbackyourbook.com. Mm -hmm. And I typed in ISBN numbers for all of my different, uh, which is on the barcode on the back of your books. And I ended up getting like, didn't we get like 65 bucks or something for a couple of my books that, I mean, I'm not going to touch again. So it was worth it for me mm -hmm. to do. So anyway, there's that sell back price there. So you can kind of have an idea if you were going to resale that book, what you could get with zero hassle. You could probably get more if you were going to sell it on the private market, but then you have to, there's more to deal with shipping and all that stuff. So we obviously you have a secret love affair with bookfinder.com <laughs> that I did not know about. I, I, now I, look, I may or may not be on there all the time. Who is this guy bookfinder and why are you sending him money? So, so, so if you want to know like how deep this really is, okay. I know, I know it is. It goes so deep. <laughs> okay, but, I, know, we're, I know we're Christopher Nolan is confused. <laughs> this is like inception level. This bookfinder. is inception okay. level confusion. So yeah. I actually have in Trello, right? I have a list for Torchlight K and Build Your Library K or zero which we're doing together, all the books. All I have the, the books? List of all By of them. all the books? Yeah, well, I have a list of all of them because, again, we don't know what the library's going to do, right? So yeah, I have right. a list of all the books that are called out. I have the ISBN numbers in there that I already gathered from Reliable Source. And then I actually put the I put the, the best used price I could find on BookFinder under all of them. So I know how much all those books cost if I wanted to go and buy them all. So every once in a while, I check back on a couple that I would really like. And I know what the used price was earlier in the summer and if it was a good price or not. So I can know that, you know, one of these books, it, it hit this price. And now everybody's stocked up for the school year. So I can't find it again. I'm waiting for it to come back down to that price that I had seen. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> Your love affair goes deep. I understand. <laughs> Sorry, so, everybody. So, no, that was probably fine. more than you all wanted to know. No, you, this sounds like one of my wild tangents I always do with you. So 
it, it's always fun to watch. So let's talk a little bit about used books now, bookfinder aside. Um, obviously, you want to go back and listen to our episode, the, the final episode in our curriculum series. We talked about how finding used uh, curriculums, a lot of the same methods and ideas uh, apply here as well for books. All those same sources, those Facebook groups, the Absolutely. homeschool consignment sales, uh, stores, convention sales. They will all sell And you books you have well. bought multiple books off a lot of these buy sell trade. Um, oh, I bought sites. so many books. I know you have. Yeah, it's and it's 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 worked really nice. Um, what are the typical process? You know, can you maybe walk somebody through a process there. They've never done this before. What tools did they use? What apps do they use? Things of you know, maybe walk them through. Yeah. So if you're if you're on one of those Facebook groups, uh, again, check out our our finding use curriculum, and in the show notes for that, you will see all of the links to all the different groups that I like to follow. Uh, somebody will post pictures of the books with prices for how much those books are. They will not include shipping typically. So you'll need to add three or four bucks or whatever, depending on how much you buy. How do you pay these people? Is it PayPal? So it's all PayPal and they need to invoice you and then you pay that invoice. This is for services. You should not use friends and family because that is not... Uh, I believe there's no way to refund that. Right. There's no way to... Re- yeah. There's no recourse if you don't get your product. The but other thing it, is... They do that. A lot of people tend to do the friends and family if they don't want to have the service fee for uh, for PayPal. That could get you in a little bit of trouble. Right. So only do the the you know goods and services. Unless you're buying it. these books from a friend. <laughs> well, yeah. If you're getting them from a friend, that's totally different. Uh, so, but only use goods and services. A lot of these groups are run by by resellers. So this is a lot of other homeschool moms and dads who find used books at library sales and other places, and then they resell them on these Facebook marketplaces. So they're businesses typically. So I haven't had any problems at all. You haven't heard of any scammers or anything of that nature? You know, I really haven't. The only thing I've heard is some folks who haven't gotten the item, uh, like it got lost in the mail or something and they didn't have insurance. And it's like, well, who's responsible for this? So I would say if you get an order that is large, you might want to purchase the insurance for that so that you know that you're covered uh, with post office should anything happen. But, but it's but, all going to be sent media mail typically. Yeah, but even if you're doing anything like this where you're buying off of, say, a Facebook or something of that nature, make sure your purchases are small enough that if you do good scams, it's, you're not scammed out of hundreds of dollars. Maybe you're scam- Maybe if you do run into a scammer or if there's a mistake, you're only out of you know, maybe a couple dozen dollars or something like that. Keep your purchases low just to be safe. Yeah. I mean, I think you're fully protected with PayPal if you do Correct. goods and services and you get insurance on the shipment. Like, I think you're pretty well covered. I have bought a lot of things. I've never had any problems. Like I said, it's typically a lot of other homeschool moms and dads who yeah. are running their own resale businesses. And we all so. know homeschool people are the most upstanding human beings on the planet. I mean, you know, I like to think so. I like to think so too. So continuing with the used books, there are a lot of places you can buy used books. So where are a few places that we like to go? So obviously there's your favorite local used bookstore. And you can oftentimes, if you don't want to drive around, you can call, find out what they've got. Half price books is another one, a little bit more expensive, but still it's it's a good source. We have bought a ton of books at Thrift, Goodwill, Value Village, or Savers, depending on what area mm-hmm. of the country you're in. These are all right, this is this is all just like you may see something. I collect DK eyewitness books and I have bought tons of them at Goodwill or Value Village over the years, but they're not I'm not like specifically looking I need this book to teach my kid this, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just, if I see them, I pick them up. Yeah, we have a good idea of like, here are the spines that we need. Here are the supplemental books that are required for the curriculum. But we also look for a lot of books that are just additional things that we know that we like. Like, for example, the DK stuff or, you know, uh, we always get the, you know, the the Disney princess books, right? Those type of things. Right, we have all the big Disney hardback books that we've gotten that they don't don't make those anymore. So you have to get them from thrift. So... Thrift is a great source for books, but it's one of those things where you just... It's a lot of hit and miss. It's hit and miss, and you have to just keep your eyes open. We've gotten some terrific Usborne books and other things from Thrift. It's just... We've got a thrift store three miles from the house. Uh, A lot of times, we, you know, when we were working and going out and doing things, uh, you know, just swing by the thrift store real quick, see what they got. Sure. You know, pick out one or two books. And then if you just do that every week, all of a sudden you've got hundreds of books, you know, hundreds of kids' books. Right. And so, so yeah. one of our favorite things to do, Matt and I, like, this is how this is how cool we are. We go out on a date day. Oh, we we is, call it. That, do you want to give them the secrets? 
the thrift we do the thrift the su- crawl the secrets we- to a successful marriage is going thrifting together well we love to thrift together and so we will actually go we will plan a like a route where we're like going by five or six thrift stores for the day and we well, plan lunch we, ha- and we have it we have a name for it uh, there's a highway 99 in north seattle right and we, call the, thrift we call it the 99 crawl there's <laughs> literally 10 or 12 thrift stores <laughs> so we just like hit them going like all the 20 way 20 miles it it's great and it, it you know we just I will neither confirm nor deny that we have spent at least one childless <laughs> anniversary day doing that. So, anyways, point being, that being said, you can have a lot of good luck at thrift, but it's not really great when you are in specific need of of some specific book. You know, it's just it's so hit and miss. But just don't count it out because we've gotten a lot of great books. Yeah, and if you are in luck. an area where there's a college town, we've noticed that college towns or you know if you're around a university or or even just a, a large community college um the the thrifting stores tend to have really nice books there yeah they'll have some great textbooks M- matt has collected all of these different textbooks yeah. about things i'm looking here right now we have plant physiology the cell we have i, I believe i have uh, four complete bachelor's degree majors here I, obviously physics from me math there's biology chemistry we have engineering. And engineering as well. We like to pick up really nice textbooks that are used that we've gotten at Thrift because our daughter just likes to flip through them and look at the pictures and it sparked conversation. So well, we had this place south of Seattle called what was it? One Sold Tales. It doesn't oh, exist anymore. Gosh. Where you could buy the books by the pound. Oh man, that place was awesome. We used to go there, get the It was like a warehouse. Didn't they have the cookies there? Yeah, yeah. They had always spunk Meyer cookies that Freshly were Freshly baked, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While well, you bought your books by the pound. And then they ended up going out of business and they had this giant warehouse sale. Maybe it was because sale. they were selling books by the pound. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> but they ended up going out of business. They sold a lot of stuff online. They ended up going out of business. They were so nice. I was so sad. But they had this thing where you, we could just fill up bags. Like, like, we spent like four it, or five hours there just was, filling bags. It was like 50,000 square feet. Like they had multiple yeah. play, They had multiple warehouses. God, I love that. We, did, we thought it was just the one. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, that was sad. I I loved that. We would drive like an hour just to go to that place. It was. Anyways, go to IKEA. Go to. <laughs> yeah, go to it was great. <laughs> Anybody in the local Seattle area that's been there, they it know was what awesome. we're talking about. Yeah. So so that's a great source. So obviously thrift, library book sales are really terrific, and some of the major library systems will have book sales a couple of times a year. Obviously, right now, a lot of them are, are on hold, but look for that when this consignment passes. Sa- there's consignment sales as well. Consignment sales is a great option. So there's there's kids' consignment sales that happen. I don't know about your area, but all over our area, we have ones in the spring and then again in the fall, and they run a couple of days, and they'll be in, you know, every few towns will have one. And I will and usually A lot plan. of them have gone online now due right. to COVID, and we, you actually purchase some I stuff from- I have been purchasing books there. These consignment sales are great. They're a great place to sell your stuff and a great place to get other things consignment stores are okay for books i haven't had a ton of great luck i know some people have great luck at consignment stores but the large consignment sales where they like you know rent out a church space or something and they have this giant sale for like a long weekend i have found some amazing book deals typically when you go the first day everything's you know it's it's good deals and you find good games there too um as well as clothes and things but uh so the first day is really great they end up having like some of them, depending on it, end up having like the second to last day is 50% off. And then the last day is like 75% off. Those and I days. will go, I will shop all three days. I remember we bought our bumbos off of those. Oh yeah. I mean, we, we've got some off. great baby yeah. stuff. Anyways, it's really terrific. And then that's a great opportunity for mm-hmm. you to also resell your books should you mm-hmm. ever want to part with them. So those are just some really great local options. If you have those in your area, keep those in mind because you never know what you'll find at these kind of sales. And again, it's important, like we said it back on the Use Curriculum podcast, you know, make sure you know what you got coming up. You know, yeah. being prepared, being plan, you know, planning out. If, if you can at all, yeah. Do it. Understanding what book series you want to get. Um, understanding what book series may be coming up in a couple of years. I know you've been buying early readers. Some of those right, early we've, been, cha- we've been buying great illustrated classics. Those yes. old, like, hardbound books that are... Uh, you know, some, some classic piece of literature, oh, it's Robinson Crusoe or whatever, but it's been abridged and they've simplified the language for earlier yeah, it's like readers. Early re- middle grade type of book. Yeah. Right. We've gotten, we have a whole stack of those books and our daughter really likes those. So it's, anyway, you can find lots of great stuff. We have kind of a book problem uh, here. So. Yeah. We don't need clothes. The kids can wear the books. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about sales. So a lot of times the big retailers will have sales. So whoa, you've done this a few times now. Yeah, I think the biggest one is the Amazon and Target, depending on who starts it. They, they end up having them at the same time. They have the buy two, get one free. And Amazon has a weird, so Target says buy two, get one free. And Amazon says like, Amazon calls it buy three for the price of two, which is very confusing. It's just buy two, get one free. But the important thing about this is like all get one free type deals, you're going to get the lowest price item free. So what I like to do to be ultra prepared to take advantage of this, and this happens a couple of times a year, and you can check with uh, your homeschool groups on Facebook and find out from them, when is the Amazon and Target sale usually? Like, What would be a good homeschool group to join for that? I mean, you could ask us, but I'm probably going to pull somebody else because I don't remember the last time I did it. I could probably <laughs> look it up in my in my checkout history and probably, Gmail. But yeah. yes, you could join a Homeschool Together podcast and ask us, and, and I might be able to look that up in my purchase history. But so this sale is... And you is, can get really expensive books in these sales. Oh, it's, it's not limited. Yeah. Like I'm doing a whole, like my reading for next year is a, I'm doing a whole Civil War thing and you got me three or four really big right. you know, classic Civil War books. And they're really about, nice yeah. books. So... Right. You can do very well. I think the thing is, is it is limited. It isn't every book, but the way to really take advantage of it, a couple things again with the lists, I think making lists is the best way to go. So I have a list at Amazon and I have a list at target of all the books that I really want to buy for the curriculum next year. So when the sale comes up, it says a couple things. One I can quickly scan and see which of the books on my list qualify for the sale and which ones do not. I can move quickly because some of the books might sell out, especially, you know, those, those Atlas of Adventures or Atlas of Animal Adventures, the ones for Torchlight, those can sell out really quickly. The other thing is you need to group these all in individual sales of three books a piece, right? So if I have six books and three of them are at 20 bucks and three of them are at 10 bucks, they're going to give me two $10 ones free. If I break it into two groups, they're going to give me one $20 one free and one $10 one free. So yeah. you, you always want to break them into separate transactions. It's easier to do that if you have everything in a list. So I know t- making lists sounds like it takes a lot of time. I would just go for, for these ones. I would go for your big gets, the ones that you, you really need that are more expensive. I was able to get... Uh, all of basically almost all of my spines for Torchlight and Build Your Library based on the last big uh, Amazon and Target sale that happened early in the summer. So I did very well and I got a bunch of books that I think were normally like $25 and I was able to get buy two, get one freeze on a bunch of them. So it was a great deal. If you have to buy new and you have a little bit of time to wait for the sale, make your wish list. I think that was, we have a bunch of other podcasts. We have some tools that we use to manage all of our books. We have some other things that we're going to talk about regarding books, but I think this was a really good intro. I think you, you've, you've given a couple of really good websites here that people should really definitely jump on, uh, understanding, putting lists together, putting wish lists together. Again, I think the, the common theme here is preparation, preparation, preparation. Right. I mean, like, I'm sorry in advance for all the money that you're going to spend on book outlet and <laughs> book. I go back to it. Uh, I'd rather have a house full of books than a house full of toys. It's just, it's all yeah, I want. Yeah, well, we, we have one. We do. We have one. <laughs> so, I, I'm looking outside this door and we got a little bit of both. The problem is I keep getting these boxes of books. So this is like, a, this is like first world problems, right? I have so many books that I bought in advance that we don't need right this minute. Yeah, we got shelf space that, issues. Right. Like I have up in my closets where I keep all the stuff for Christmas and birthdays and things <gasps> like that. Shh, Games we haven't opened yet and stuff. And I have... <laughs> boxes stacked full of stuff because i kind of want some of it to be like a surprise for our daughter for next year i don't want her to see everything right away and that's something we like to do we like to roll out you know certain books you know hey every other month we pull out something new for her to look at and she really likes it right if she's been like but i'm running out of space at this point you know if she's been exceptionally good and makes you know takes the dog out takes the trash out cleans the house (laughs) makes all the dinners you know i i want breakfast in bed (laughs) You know, does all the, you know, the normal stuff that our children are forced to do every day. Yeah, we'll give her a book in rewards. Right? No? Okay. We like, we like to end this podcast like we always do and what we're into this week. Can I do the do it? All right. You're a wizard, Ari. <laughs> we're sorry about the folks in the UK that are listening. You're a wizard, his, Ari. For his terrible, oh, terrible Rubius Hagrid. You're a wizard, Ari. <laughs> no, you're terrible.
terrible. I'm blowing out normalization. I can see it on the window reflection right oh, now. Geez. <laughs> so, yes, Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter, as so many of you do. This So what we're talking about is not necessarily Harry Potter, because we all know Harry Potter is awesome. Let's face it. But our what's daughter... The most, what's the most important thing? The most important thing is that our daughter has had a behavioral problem since she was a baby. Basically, it's like a thumb sucking. It's a finger sucking. So we've been dealing with it. She's almost five. And we've been trying to get her to stop for like two and a half years. And we have tried literally everything we've tried if you ever buy the bitter nail polish oh god that stuff's bad that stuff is bad and the kid is just gonna power right through it right and then you get it on your lips and then you get it on you and all of a sudden you're tasting bitter stuff it's terrible so so we have tried it all we've tried products we've tried the psychology we've We've tried tried talking it through it we've tried working on on all the issues okay at the end of the day it is such an ingrained habit it's almost like an addiction right so so I was reading about with it, with an addiction, you have to have something that's either they're so scared that they, they stop or that they want something bad enough that they stop. And, you know, we tried, we tried telling her how it was going to affect her teeth and all these things. And just none of that stuff really worked for her. It was too much of a crutch at the time. Right. She's just very attached to this. This is the way that she's used to go to sleep since she was six months old. So Instead, she has wanted to read Harry Potter since, I don't know, as far as I can remember. When she first got into books, well, and, and she saw these books. You're, you're a big Potter fan. You have all the books on your shelf. And, then and I have been, the illustrated editions. You've been editions. collecting the illustrated and editions. And I have the pop-up books. They have the movies and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, I got all the things. And so she's been seeing those illustrated books. And, and I have let her like look at some of the pictures of them before. She is just, and she knows it's this one thing that is very special to mommy and that we're not going to read it till you're ready. So... She's just about five. I would still not say that she's really ready to read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You've read her a couple chapters now, and sometimes she's a little lost. Right. Why don't you go through how you're reading it to her? I think it's a really good way you're doing it. I, I don't think she's necessarily completely ready, but because we are using this to help with this behavioral problem, which, by the way, we're like over a week in, and I think we're like eight days, and she has not sucked on them in eight days. Alfie Cohn is, you know rolling his grave yeah i don't think he's in the grave so no, he's okay. just rolling over <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah we like, are my rolling over we <laughs> are using rewards but it's something that she wanted so much mm-hmm. that it's helped her to quit this habit and it's been a major breakthrough so what i've done is she's so interested in reading it we read a half a chapter together at night is assuming that she's had good behavior and the potter chapters are pretty long i mean they are pretty long so like a half I think we should have broken um, said, diagonally like, into like, yeah, it's like three. Three, 3 thousand it's words every chapter. So like, yeah, was that? There's only 20, 17 20, chapters in the whole book. So like 20, 25 pages each. Yeah. Right. We're reading the illustrated edition. So it's very engaging for her. We read half a chapter at night and then the next morning or sometime during the next day, we listen to that half a chapter on audiobook with Jim Dale because it's the only way to listen to it. Yeah. And then, but also she likes listening to audiobooks right. and she's we we're finding that she's a very auditory learner. So doing that kind of reinforcement. And mm-hmm. then Jim Dale's so good at doing the audio reads all and he voices. does all the voices that I think that's a great way to reinforce what she's reading. And I have found where you've read it to her, I've asked her what's happened. She could tell you a little bit, but then once she does the audiobook, I think it just it's like that double reinforcement. It for all her. comes together. And yeah. then we watch that clip section from the movie because i own all the movies so we are slowly you have watching all the movies don't give me that look of course you know we have all the movies so uh so then we watch that that section so we're slowly watching the movie kind of in time with the book and it's been fun because she's been like wait a minute mommy this piece was in the book but it wasn't in the movie and we've gotten to kind of talk about how that's different so i'm reading it extremely slowly we're going into every bit of it in depth and uh, I don't know, we may start cooking from the Harry Potter cookbook I have soon, which would be exciting. So we're just kind of moving as slowly as we can through it. But I think that I think that what we want to do really communicate with this is not to go out and read your four and a half year old Harry Potter, but instead that when your kid wants something really badly that might be a little bit outside their grasp, there there could be ways that you can modify it to to give them what they want uh, but make it kind of appropriate. I've also had to change a few things mm-hmm. as far as the killing and some of the things so that it was more appropriate for her. I've had to change some of the language because she didn't understand mm-hmm. some of the, the vocabulary. 
and some of the vocabulary I've just explained what it is. And so that's worked out all right. Uh, but just, but this just is to a, know. This is a great way to up her active literacy, put her a little it's bit true. of stretch goals, something that she is super passionate about. She's going to elevate herself to that level. And I think it's, you're going to, we're going to see growth as you're reading this book to her in her uh, language, mm-hmm. in her, you know, in her comprehension, you're going to see this because she's so into it. And I think, you know, this is a lot of the the things that we always talk about with homeschooling is that there's that intrinsic motivation within the child. Mm-hmm. And you want to bring that out as much as possible. Use that intrinsic motivation to propel this, you know, your learner forward, um, get them through hurdles that they may be going through or to elevate them even further. And this is a great way to do it. And the way you're doing it where you you know, similar to how I like to talk about the micro lessons, you're mm-hmm. taking a little bit of bite sized chunks, you're layering multiple different types of media on top of it, you're giving this wide breadth of experience, and I think she's she's eating it up. I think she's really enjoying it. She she's you know, talking about it all day long. Right. She's very excited. It's really worked for us. I think that there's so there there's a way to get something that might be a bit outside your your learner's current level mm-hmm. and bring it down to where they need it to be for them to be really engaged and enjoy it. So, yo, wizard, Harry. It's <laughs> terrible. Terrible? <laughs> you have a terrible Hagrid. Yo, wizard, Harry. You're, a little you're Hagrid and your Schwarzenegger are terrible. Listen to me, Hagrid. <laughs> where is Harry? <laughs> I don't know. He's a, he's a wizard. <laughs> no. It's just terrible. terrible. Just terrible. All right, that's it. We're done. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!